Is sketching with one continuous line a fun warm-up exercise or a serious technique that will improve your sketching? Hey, I'm Scotty and thanks for joining me. We're going to go in-depth into sketching with one line. Some people have mentioned to me that they're afraid to use ink first to go into that line work. It's hard to make a mark on a page, especially if you've bought a really nice sketchbook. It's hard to get in there and just go loose straight away. So some of the things I want to go through today is how I improve my sketching using this technique, who will actually benefit from using this exercise, and how it could improve your sketching. And then I'm going to go through some tips on how to do it effectively. So today I'm setting myself a challenge. I'm going to sketch these references with one line, trying not to lift my pen off the page. And then I've saved this reference to the end because it's so complicated. I would never go into this trying to sketch everything perfectly. I think this is a great example of something very complicated and we can sketch this with one continuous line to make it really loose and quick. I think this sketch will really look good with some watercolour at the end. So this is an exercise that I haven't done in a long time. So you might see me here lift my pen every now and again because it's just hard to stop that instinct of taking a step back and looking back at your sketch. I'm going to add in a rule for us that we don't have to sketch the face in one line. So let's leave the face blank and then we'll add in a few strokes at the end just to imply the facial features. When I first got back into sketching people and portraits, I was actually very frustrated. I was trying to draw things really realistically and using all the traditional proportions and techniques, but my sketches looked very rigid and tight. One day I was trying to sketch my daughter when she was a toddler and every time I started to sketch her, she would run up and she would snatch the pen out of my hands. So it forced me to try and sketch her as quickly as possible. I would only have about 10 seconds sometimes to sketch. And that, that helped me develop a very fast sketching technique. So instead of trying to sketch her traditionally, I actually had to use a one line sketching technique. It was the fastest way to sketch her quickly and get the main shapes in and go into some of the details quickly before she came and snatched my pen. I remember looking back at these sketches and actually really liking the feeling from them. And that's what opened the door to loose, quick sketching for me. It really broke that feeling of perfectionism that I was trying to achieve with my other sketching. But is this for you? Is this something that you should be using or practicing? Well, I think for some people, this will just be a fun exercise that you can do every now and again. It might just help stop some art block that you're having. Go away from your traditional styles, your painting, your drawing, and go and do a one line sketch. It might help you change the way you're thinking. Also, I'm not recommending that everybody use this as their main technique. I'll explain later how I use parts of this in my sketching technique. But if you love loose sketching, if you want to express your creativity quickly and fluidly, I really recommend using this technique. It's especially great for if you're doing urban sketching or if you're sketching people quickly in public. So the great thing about this exercise is, it, is that it's for all levels of skill. You can be a complete beginner and come up with a really great loose sketch. You can add some watercolor on the top, splash some white highlights on it and look really great. And if you're a more advanced artist, I still think it's helpful to do these exercises every now and again to help loosen up your style. Also, if you feel like your portraits or your figure drawing are becoming too rigid, then I think this is another way to help you loosen up. You could do this sketching before you do your other sketching. You could do a one line sketch before you start sketching with pencil and do realistic drawing. I think it will help with your line work and it will help with the way you think. As this approach has many mistakes and it's not very accurate, you're forced to work with the mistakes and it gives you confidence. I think that's one of the most important things. It gives you confidence with your line work, it gives you confidence to put a mark on the page. This process doesn't really give you the chance to worry about mistakes. You're going so quickly and you're building each shape as they go that if, if you do make a mistake, you can just go over the top, make about three lines in that one spot to make that shape the right shape. And in the end, I think it looks better as a whole when you've got all those kind of loose lines going around. So how I recommend to use this technique. Firstly, I recommend finding a great reference. You can use these references and I'll link them in the description. I think it's easier with a figure drawing and a scene where some people are walking or riding a bike. So you start from the top and you work your way down. In some of my other sketch videos, I've done the silhouette, 
but with this I found it harder to do the silhouette first because then you have to work your way up through the details and you've already gone past that point. So I recommend trying to build each shape and going working your way down. Okay, I'm onto this really complicated hard reference. I would never attempt this with my brush pen. It would be just too much work for me. But doing this one line technique, I think it's perfect. So I've sketched all these parts. It's very impressionistic. Another tip is to use the clothing as a really nice feature. Whenever you get to a, a point where it changes angle, like the elbow and knee, make sure you do some really nice dramatic twirly lines in there to show that there's a, something compressing, the clothing is bending. I think it's a great way to show expression where you're not following the shape exactly, you're going around and do little loopy lines in those areas. Another thing is to expect your brain to tell you that this is looking really bad. And so as you're going, you think, oh no, this is not going to look good. Just keep going. Keep going right to the end and then do this about five times. Keep going. It does look great when you look back later. If you're unsure about your sketch, if it's too complicated, add some watercolour wash on the top and that really helps separate the different features. You can try and keep the pen always moving. And I found it easier when I have this solid tip pen. So this is a Uniball micro pen and it has a solid tip so I can press quite hard as I do the lines. You can use a normal fine liner, that's fine, but I, I tend to press too hard so the tip will go into the shaft. Now I cheat a bit, I don't do the face in one line. I just feel like they look really strange and the, the way that when you go from the nose to the lips, it kind of makes it look like a cat or a mouse or something. So I recommend stopping at the face, drawing the little lines on the face, which makes it look much better. So I'll sketch the face in seven strokes. Two for the eyebrows, then I've got under the nose, two for the lips and the both eyes, with just a little dark section for where the eye is looking. And now I'm going to add some watercolour and I think that'll help break up the forms. Once I've done the watercolour I can move to my Posca pen and all these techniques are actually influenced by a course I did on Domestica by Albert Kiefer. I'll link it above but it was really helpful. He used alcohol markers but I think that it looks really good with watercolour as well. I'm using the same moleskin sketchbook that he used. And a similar style, he doesn't use a one line technique, but his line work is very dynamic and loose. So this idea of doing very loose, swirly lines, adding in some white highlights on top, it's a great way for all levels of skill to produce a really interesting, expressive artwork. So how do I use this technique in my other sketches when I'm doing portraits, when I'm doing more of an accurate figure drawing? Well, I take aspects of this. I will sketch sections of the arm in one line or I'll go around the silhouette in one line. It really helps with sketching, not to do tiny little strokes one after the other. I've got a great example of this. These are two videos, one recent video on how to sketch a face in seven steps. And then another example of urban sketching where I'm sketching a reference using a pen and I'm using these techniques within my sketching. I show you how I break down the sketch using aspects of this one line technique and then adding a really nice wash at the end. So you can check those out. I hope that's helped you. If finding your sketches are too rigid and tight, you're afraid of going straight to ink on paper. Let me know if you've tried out this technique before and if it's helped you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.